Today, the Feedback Sports Omnium Portable Trainer. That's what we're looking into. A few weeks back over at Eurobike, I caught up with Jeff and the crew. They took us through the unbox build and all the specs of the unit. So here's a recap of that now. So I'm here with Jeff from Feedback Sports. Now this is one trainer I don't have on the Unbox Build First Ride video series that I'm doing. So Jeff, tell us about this portable trainer. Okay, this is the Omnium uh, portable trainer. And, and I think by nature of the name itself, it, it implies what it is. And we have the only trainer with internal progressive resistance that you can actually pack up in the bag and take with you on the plane. Okay, so this has resistance, and not just a set of rollers that you spin out on. Right. What resistance are we talking about? So it's a patented magnetic internal resistance inside yep. the drum that uh, utilizes, a, a, I call it an off-axis axle, that as the drum spins faster, the magnet rotates around the inside of the drum and gets actually closer yep. to the uh, steel insert in the drum, and that creates a stronger force. So it has a more natural road-like feel than you know, fluid trainers or wind trainers or anything else. Sure, okay, and what resistance can we get up to on one of these things? Uh, it depends on who you are and how fast you can go. We were working with the Lotto Sudal team this yep. past year and uh, Greipel had used it and he can put some power on it. Yep. The, the amount of resistance uh, is really essentially unlimited because you have so many variables with gear ratios and things. Um, the magnetic resistance, they call it going level, so it's a progressive resistance to about uh, uh, 600 watts and then... That's more that than point, enough for a warm-up. Uh, completely, yes. <laughs> and maybe a few sprints as well. Yeah. yeah. So our trainer is compatible with uh, several types of through axles. Uh, right now it's set up for straight QR. Pull this out. These are removable, so you take the sleeve out. Uh, this is set up for 15 by 100 for mountain bikes. Now it's set up for 15 by 110 for boost size, and we have a different adapter that comes with it for 12 mil by 100. So all the adapters required come with in the kit when yes. you purchase? It, and, and it's used a lot as a warm-up cool-down. What people are finding is they enjoy the ride quality so much that they're trading out their regular trainers and calling this their everyday trainer. Really? Yeah. Indoors as well, so portable Absolutely. and their, their go-to trainer indoors. So thanks to Jeff for doing all the hard work for us there. We just get to do the fun part today. I get to unbox Ride. We'll put it through the Llama lab test. It's not a smart trainer, so we can't do erg mode, but we can still put it through that variable resistance with the speed and look at some data from that. Okay, let's get kitted up. Let's get the thing built in no time at all. Let's get riding.
done and dusted the Llama lab test on the Omnium portable trainer. First thing I wanted to know is could I make the back skip off those little rollers? I'm used to riding rollers that are a lot larger than that. Was the bike gonna skip off? The answer is no, I couldn't. I was bending the bike and trying to skip it, it stays straight, so that's good to know. The front end's probably a little bit more unstable than what I thought with that sort of fork three-point mount. It can move a little bit, so you can't wildly swing the bike, you can't just sort of clip in and swing a leg over nice and quick, you'll go toppling over. So you've gotta have it on a nice stable base and you're good to go. The next question I had was, would it be capable of completing the entire Llama lab test that I put the smart trainers through? Absolutely, it did the job just nicely. Let's flip over here to DC Rainmaker's analysis site. You can see there after my standard 10 minute or so warm up, dropped into 200 watts erg mode. Well, it wasn't erg mode, it was telling me to do 200 watts. I had to choose it. Again, no erg mode. That section there, average 201 watts. The next section, I average 220 watts. So who needs erg mode? Well, okay, sometimes we need erg mode, but that was nice and smooth. I was able to hold that power with the uh, number on the screen there telling me what to do. And then into the two sprints, more than enough sustained power there for me. Uh, I topped out there at probably 130, 140 RPM at about 700, it kept spinning from there. But 700 watts of resistance for one of these units, more than capable of what I needed. And then into my varied step test that I always do on these trainers, which is 150, 350, 150, 350, so it's pretty close. 150, 450, a little bit over the mark there. 150, 450, pretty close. But that was me having to choose which gear to flip down into and smash those watts as quickly as I could to get it up to speed for what was on the screen for that workout. So more than capable of doing it, I just had to learn how many gears to flip down and the feel of what that 450 was and then hit that to sustain through for the 20 seconds. So more than capable. And then at the end, I did a small step test here to get some data for a speed slash power curve, which I'll put up on the screen here. Now there's only a few data points here, but it shows that it's pretty consistent. It's consistent enough for both Zwift and Trainer Road to have a known power curve for this unit, so it can be selected as a virtual power meter. Noise wise, the answer is yes. It does make some noise, but not a lot. It's not obnoxious, but when you do spin that thing up, it is quite loud. So it's not a silent one. It's, again, it depends on so many variables. Let's just put it in the not too obnoxious category for sound. So is this unit fit for purpose? Well, smart trainers are like gremlins. If you get them wet, things don't go too well. This thing, which is built for portability, carting it around to races, maybe getting a bit of water on it, that's fine. So absolutely, it does the job perfectly. Throwing it in the back of the car and leaving it there, no problems, either behind the seat or on the seat itself is no problems. The unit weight, 6.8 kilos on my scales. The ride feel itself feels a little empty. There's no flywheel there, so you do have to crank the, uh, the pedals over. It's pretty light over the dead spots. Reminds me a lot of the Cyclops Magnus. It has a uh, flywheel size of around 1.1 kilos, I think, so that's pretty light on for a smart trainer, a wheel on smart trainer. This feels very similar. There's not a lot of momentum there, but for warm-ups and once you're in the zone pushing those massive watts, it gives you a fair good workout. So fit for purpose, for portability, and as a warm-up device, this is brilliant. Finally, the price, 295 pounds, uh, 499 Australian dollars or 400 dollars US. So there is a premium to pay here for a non-smart trainer, but it saves you taking your smart trainer outdoors if that's all you have, and it gives you a good solution to throw in the car and leave in the car. I was gonna say leaving the car with the kids, but they come to the races as well, but there's more space for the kids. So we'll wrap it up there. Thanks for watching and uh, let us know below if you've got one or looking at buying one. See you soon.